we can now turn to the production possibility frontier, or PPF. This is a representation of the supply side of the economy. It is the various combinations of output possible if all resources are used efficiently. In the Riccardi model, there's a very simple version of this because labor is the only input. Full use, full efficient use of all resources then is simply full employment. It's the full employment condition. So let's take a look at a representation of this. Total labor supply is given by LA. That is equal to the total amount of labor used in the production of X and the total amount of labor used in the production of Y. If all labor is used in one or the other industry, the sum of those equals the total amount of labor. That is to say you have full employment. So we'll rearrange this equation a bit. Divide everything by ALY, the unit labor coefficient for good Y. ALY cancels over on the right, and what we're left with is an equation of the unemployment rate or full employment condition, which can be interpreted as the equation for the production possibility frontier is that it's giving the trade-offs between the production of X and the production of Y when all labor is used. And if we look at this equation, we'll see that the slope is the familiar ALX over ALY, which we've already seen, is the opportunity cost of X in terms of Y that we saw earlier. So now we'll actually graph this, where the vertical axis is the amount of y that's produced and, and x is the amount of x that's produced. The most y that can be produced is if we took all of the labor in the country and divided it by how many workers it took to produce one unit of y, that's a L A over A L Y, and that's the y intercept. An analogous calculation gives us the total amount of x that could be produced if you produce no y and only x. Of course, Different combinations can be produced as well, not only focusing on only on one good or the other. Some combination could be produced, and that is given by this straight line, which is the PPF. As we saw before, the slope is ALX over ALY. That is to say, the opportunity cost of X is the slope of the PPF. It'll be useful to think about what would happen to this PPF if the amount of labor that was available in this economy were to double. The original PPF is given by the, the dotted line. If we double the amount of labor available in the economy, 2 LA over ALY would be the new maximum Y that could be produced. Similarly, 2LA over ALX would be the total amount of X that could be produced if that was the only input. Connecting the two dots gives us the new PPF. And what we see is that the PPF is basically an expanded version of the original PPF. That is to say the trade-off between the, the production of the two goods. The slope of the PPF doesn't change. So the opportunity cost of X and Y doesn't change in the Riccardian model if labor amounts change. That will not be the case in the neoclassical model that we'll be analyzing a bit later. A particular Riccardian model example, America has 100 units of labor. It can produce one unit of X with 10 workers, and, or it can produce one unit of, of Y with 10 workers. So the trade-off between America and X and Y is one to one. Brazil takes six workers to produce an X, only two workers produce a Y. Note that by assumption, 
total amount of labor that's available in the two economies are equal. So in this particular example, Brazil has the absolute advantage in good X and Y. It takes fewer resources, less labor, to produce both X and to produce Y in Brazil. America will still have a comparative advantage in one of the goods. So America's PPF, given by this line, where the intercepts are 10Y and 10X, and with a trade-off of 1Y per X, that's the opportunity cost of X is 1Y. And Brazil, similarly, has the ability to produce 50Y with its resources, or 16.6X if it only produces X with a trade-off, an opportunity cost, of 3y for every x.